tonight at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, there are almost 80,000 sets of eyes prepared to watch the Auburn Tigers, ranked number 13 in the nation, take on the Texas Longhorns. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin, along with Mike Gottfried. Welcome once again. It was Saturday evening of prime time CFA football. For the Longhorns, they're trying to get over what was a shocking loss at the hands of Mississippi State two weeks ago. And for Auburn, well, they just try to keep on keeping on. They're 2-0. and Peter Gardier, quarterback for Texas, did not have a good ball game against Mississippi State. But that's all the youngster has heard, Mike, for two weeks, even on the headlines of the paper today. He may be tired of hearing it, but that's the bottom line as far as the key for the horns tonight. Well, it is, Ron. When you lose, the heat goes to the coach and the quarterback. Peter Gardier needs to have success tonight if Texas is to win. They'll go to a two-back set. He needs to be involved. They need to get a running game going. And J Butch had not to tailback. Look for him to carry 30 times tonight. If he gets over 100-plus yards, then I think they have a chance to be successful tonight, Ron. The Auburn Tigers, led by the veteran head coach, Pat Dye, who has been still very successful, but surprisingly, in 1991, as many games as he has won, they're undergoing a lot of changes, Mike. All they do at Auburn is win, and, they, and they're, trying, they're changing. Offensively, a little bit more of a controlled passing game. Defensively, from a 50 defense to a 4-3 defense. But the key in tonight's game will be the quarterback, Stan White. He does a very good job in the control passing game. They'll use him in the shotgun, and he's very tough to sack because he gets rid of the ball quickly. Well, let's go down to the field. Adrian Karsten is in his usual position and get the temperature of what's happening down there. Adrian. Well, Ron, tonight all these Texas eyes will be on four guys. The Longhorn defensive line. Pegged in the preseason by many as the best defensive front in the country. And I'll tell you something, that's just a, not just because they're big, huge guys or have great ability. I sat down with these guys coming out of the field right now, training table yesterday, and I found four of the best friends who are intense about whatever it is they're doing together. Now, unlike other 4-3 defenses, they do such a great job at the point of uh, right at the line of scrimmage that they leave very little for the middle linebackers to worry about. Tonight, I'm going to be down here in the middle of the emotion the Longhorns have brought into this game. So coming up, it's the Longhorns and the Auburn Tigers from the state capital of Texas. For football, as a cold front came through here day before yesterday, the rains went out of the area, and at kickoff time, the temperature was scheduled to be about 72 degrees, dropping into the low 60s. Eighth meeting between these two teams. Texas leads the series five games to two. They have split their last two outings. In 87, Auburn won a 31 to three. In fact, that was the first game for David McWilliams as a head coach on the 40 Acres. And in 1984, Texas won it 35 to 27. Both of those wins were at home, and that game in 1984, uh, well, Bo Jackson had an outstanding evening until he broke a collarbone, was lost for the year. Three-time SEC Coach of the Year, Pat Dye. Had some off-season surgery. Uh, he has relegated some duties to other people, Mike, that, uh, you know, maybe as he continues to become more senior as a head coach, maybe he realizes that you can't do it all yourself. Not that he has always tried to do that, but... You know, I think it's key. He seems like a, a little bit of a change man. As you look at David McWilliams, the 1990 Southwest Conference Coach of the Year, former player for the Longhorns, was an academic All-American here at the University of Texas as the eyes of Texas comes upon us. set for the kickoff in this one. Let's talk a little bit more about the keys in this one tonight. And you had mentioned to me uh, the early this morning in our production meeting, so goes the quarterback who has the hot hand, so goes the team that you think will win this football game. I really do, Ron. I think Texas must settle down Peter Gardier. The coaches have to give him a game plan where he'll have success early. Play action passes, rollout passes, but Butch had not. Must have a 25-plus carry game, over 100-yard rushing game for them to win. Jason Post will kick it off. A look at Jason right there. At number one is Parker, who is a wide receiver. Back 
and a triple safety. Bailey, who was very, very dangerous, number 18, along with Pedro Cherry, number 28, for the Auburn Tigers. Quite a few people have ventured over from Auburn for this ball game. It is not all burnt orange in the stadium, as this one is underway. Bailey from the two. Big opening, and he's got a lot of running room all the way out to the 39-yard line. Now let's take a look at the Energizer starting lineups tonight. First of all, for the Auburn offense, getting better and better. Stan White, he is the man, number 11. Two very good tight ends. Watch number 85, Fred Baxter. And up on the offensive front, anybody who wears a 55 extra long jacket, well, Eddie Blake is a very hard man to get around. And that offensive front will need good services from him today. Play action right over the middle. There's Baxter, the tight end we were just talking about, and all the way down to the 36-yard line as we take a look at the Longhorn defense to start tonight. All-American Shane Dronette on the left side. It's a very good and big defensive line for Texas. Boone Powell, 56. He's the one that's going to have to keep check of those two Auburn tight ends tonight. And in the secondary, very large for a strong safety, Lance Gunn. He's around 225, big hitter for the Horns. go with a reverse. Parker tries to get it outside, gets by the linebacker and will be knocked out of bounds, but that is going to be very close to the first down, and Auburn has come out with a bag of tricks in the first two plays. Well, if you want to loosen up a defense, this is the way to do it. Pat Dye's offense starts the game out with a bootleg pass that they threw to the tight end, and they come back with a reverse. What that does to Texas defense, it unnerves them a little bit right off of the bat. They just need to settle down and try to draw a beat on Auburn. Almost makes me think that there was a, a Bowden on the staff. From the 25, great protection, throws to his other tight end, and Victor Hall will take it all the way down, and he will score. Texas is stunned defensively. You know when you play Texas, you're playing a lot of man coverage in the secondary. That's why you use a lot of crossing routes, and that's where they were able to hit the tight end on the crossing route to the touchdown. Von Wild with the extra point, and he's good. Mike, let's take another look. This is as devastating an offensive attack as you've seen in the time. Play action, which holds the linebackers. Here you see the tight end coming across, number 87. Victor Hall, linebacker, just didn't pick him up. Anthony Curl, number 42. Then Hall does a great job of stretching out for the touchdown. I'm not sure he wasn't down before the arm went over. Here you see Victor Hall. The linebacker leaves him go. The other linebacker, Anthony Curl, should have picked him up. Catches the football in the crossing route into the touchdown. Grady Cabinus makes the tackle. Quarterback Stan White. Stan White's reaction, and I, I, I guess he is elated. What a way to start a football game. Bam, bam, bam. Everything working on all cylinders because the kick return team almost breaks it. They give him excellent field position so you don't have to go conservative with the first call. He hits the tight end, then they run the reverse. Another pass to a tight end there in the end zone. Ron, when you bring a team on the road, especially Texas, where it's a tough place to play, that's a great drive to try to silence the crowd. But, you know, maybe it's overworked, but it is very true. To take the crowd out of a game early is extremely important. So, And that's the point that you're making. And right now, they've taken close to 80,000 out of the ball game. Well, they've also put pressure on an offense that had trouble in an opening ball game. Now Texas offense has to answer that call. It is going to come down to Adrian Walker at the three. Walker runs out of bounds around the 21-yard line. And let's meet the Texas offense. Quarterback Peter Gardere. 
And the pressure is on him to turn it around and have a good ball game. Seven times last year, he did that. Butch had not the newcomer of the year in the Southwest Conference last year. Derek Duke, part of a very young core of receivers, but uh, he is the one with the most experience. And Mr. Dependable on the offensive line is uh, number 79, Chuck Johnson, who occupies that left tackle position. Six, now seven, and let's take a look at the starters for the Auburn Tigers on defense tonight as they continue to make some changes. Ricky Sutton was an outside linebacker last year and has now been moved to a down lineman. In the middle of linebacker, you'll see number 56, an awful lot tonight, Daryl Crawford, very speedy and very good. And in the secondary, Corey Barlow, he's the man that leads the charge right there. Very, very good cover guy. Texas with a reverse. Kenny Neal. And he will be tackled short of the first down, I believe, as he crosses the 30 at the 31. And now let's see where the, the spot will be. 72, John Wilson, the senior from Haleyville, Alabama, 6'6", 255, was outside to make the stop. And referee Joe Thomas, who is from the Southwest Conference, will bring the chain in to measure. This is a split crew tonight, Mike. Uh, what are your feelings about that? Well, I said the other day, when you're a visiting coach and you're on the road, you like to see them because you get to see at least three of your own people. But when you're at home, you like to see a full crew of your people. It, it's my understanding next year there will be no more split crews, right? That's true. Well, what do you do in this case? Do both teams come together and say, hey, we go out and get somebody from the ACC or, uh, or another conference or what? An SEC crew would come in here for this game in the, in the Texas Stadium. If Texas went back to play Auburn, then it'd be a Southwestern crew. And not again. Goes for three. That's James Willis, number 51, as they continue to... Uh, Scratch at each other a little bit. Chuck Johnson, number 79 for Texas, trying to block on the play. This is the kind of game plan Texas needs to, to have. They just got to keep running. Butch had not. Eventually, that will open up some play action passes for Peter Gardier. Number 55, Turk McDonald, the junior from DeSoto, Texas, comes out over the football. Gardier's going to run. Whoa. He gets crushed after a gain of one. Cromarty was the first man there along with Daryl Crawford. And now the Longhorns look at a third down and the line to make is the 41. You see the back of the Texas offense against the 4-3 defense. It's a new defensive alignment. Auburn coach Wayne Hall, the defensive coordinator, is using. They run so well on defense, you have to try to fool them a little bit with misdirection plays to slow them down. Walker and Wilson, the split backs. They'd like to throw the Walker a lot. He gets the pass. Turns it upfield and is going to be short of the first down. As Gardeer got annihilated just as he got the pass away. Okay, that's a deal. Vinny Pierce was really putting pressure on. And Texas will have to kick it away. Kelly McClanahan. Seven times he had to kick against Mississippi State. And this is Bailey, who was back at a deep single safety. He's the one that shocked Ole Miss just before halftime last week. Run, run. Bailey breaks by a tackle at the 45-yard line and is knocked out of bounds. So let's take a break. 41 yards in the kick and 24 on the return. It is Auburn 7 at Texas nothing. And back here at Memorial Stadium, Auburn struck quickly. Now they go to the shotgun formation. White. Incomplete. Pass he threw out and the route by Herbert Casey. He turned back in on the ball. Maybe a little miscommunication on that. And let's go down to Adrian Carson for an update on the Texas defense. The defense touted as the best in the country moments ago went back on the field literally stunned on two pass placement one reverse 
The coaches said the problem is when you're 6'5", 260, 270, you stand straight up. That's exactly what the Auburn offensive line was doing. They would cut them, and they go right to the ground, give absolutely no defense to that offer, our Auburn offense at all. Overton in motion as they go with the running play. Straight up the middle is Frazier. He'll take it in the vicinity of the 50, and Shane Dronett comes up along with Willie Mac Garza out of the secondary to make the tackle. Mike, you know, you talk about big this, big that. As far as the early going in this ballgame, this is almost a crucial drive because of the fact that Texas offense has been stuttering the way it has. Big play right here for the Texas defense. They need to shut down Auburn. Third down, the line to make, the 44 of Texas. Pressure up the middle, and it is dropped. Good heavens, Victor Hall was wide open. And the tight end has just been all alone all night. So Texas dodges a large one. <laughs> hey, you see Victor Hall. Crossing route again against man coverage. Lance Gunn, the strong safety, has him. Good pick by the umpire. <laughs> Garza calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 14-yard line. 36 yards in the punt, and for the second time tonight, Texas will get the football, and for the second time tonight, it will be deep in their own territory. ESPN continues its exclusive coverage of Thursday night college football this week from San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium as the Bruins of UCLA travel south to take on the San Diego State Aztecs. Mike Patrick and Mike Godfrey will be there for the shootout. That is on Thursday evening, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Bounces off the tackle. That is an excellent second effort as he takes it up to the 18-yard line. James Willis from his linebacking position, number 51. Willis is 6'3", 231, but Mike is timed at 4'6 in the 40. They're very quick at linebacker. They are very quick on defense. Here's Butch Haddon not just running out of a tackle. He's such a powerful runner. As I said in the opening, he has to gain over 100 yards for Texas to have any kind of shot. Three carries for 14 yards for Hadnock. <laughs> Carrick and Cunningham steps up into the hole to make the tackle on Hadnock this time. And Chuck Johnson, the veteran left tackle for the Longhorns, is down at the 16-yard line. Ron, these are both two teams that toward the end of the season didn't have a lot of success. Auburn lost to Alabama. Of course, they went into bowl and won, and they started out the season in pretty good shape with two wins. Texas lost to Miami in the bowl game and lost to Mississippi State in the opener. So they're feeling their way a little bit. Somebody's going to gain some confidence tonight. The other team's going to go in the wrong direction, I believe. But Texas is a team that has had little success on offense and tonight's going to be very important for Lynn Amity the offensive coordinator to try to put him in a position where they are successful and he has to call some plays where Peter Gardier is going to be successful I believe rollout passes and they play action passes as I said earlier one of the things that also has been changed for tonight Lynn Amity is normally in the press box and they have now put him on the sideline so that as much as anything he can have more personal contact according to coach McWilliams with his quarterback and try to help settle him down a little bit well you hope that's the case I, I that's what you'd like for to happen I, as a coach you wouldn't want it to signal that there's uh, some kind of problem also but uh, I like the idea a coach can be on the sideline both his coordinators Leon Fuller and Lynn, Lynn Amity are on the sidelines tonight other scores from around the country and if you think the first two or three Saturdays were a little wacko how about today Texas A&M gets stunned by a Tulsa football team that had defeated Oklahoma State earlier Florida trailing big to Syracuse at the Carrier Dome some big games today and of course Southern Cal and Arizona State Arizona State with that victory big win for Arizona State and Larry Marmy. The one setback is Patrick Wilson. Third down, Texas needs the 24. Greg Bear with his first pass, and it is almost intercepted. Intended for Derek Duke, and in fact, if the two defensive backs don't run together, that's a pickoff. That's a bad sign for the Texas fans. Peter Gardier 
A drop back pass. He's going to try to throw the curl route to the left. Pretty good protection. Steps up through behind the receiver. I'm not so sure that's not the receiver's fault. And, and that's what David McWilliams said at Mississippi State. Here you watch the receiver, and here's the collision coming to two defensive backs of Auburn. Freddie Smith, number six, almost picking it off. And Pina they, actually had a better shot at it, number 23, and then S Smith has hurt himself going after the football. Well, David's, David McWilliams told us last week that the, the Mississippi State game, the receivers ran wrong routes, and actually when they needed 10 yards, they ran seven yards, and I don't care how good a quarterback you are. You need everything. It's, it's like the typewriter effect. One guy makes a mistake here, another guy makes a mistake. You need everybody in sync, and Peter Gardier needs a lot of help on this offense to get some confidence. Bailey drops back in a deep safety, and happy to report that Fred Smith, the freshman quarter, or cornerback out of Eufaula, Alabama, is going off under his own steam. First punt tonight, 40 yards for Kelly McClanahan. Auburn may go after this punt. They got 10 men down at the line of scrimmage. Tigers have the return on. Bailey gets by the first man down, and what happened was the Texas player realized he was going to be too close to him, and Burdine had to back off. Let's take a timeout. Auburn, seven. Texas, nothing. To feel free every day, like you can fly all day. Johnston & Murphy has perfected the first truly comfortable men's dress shoe. Our trampoline cushion system is a technological revolution that makes the shoes you have to wear feel just like the shoes you want to wear. The trampoline cushion system, only from Johnston & Murphy. We are taking revolutionary steps. celebrate the 21st century a little early. Introducing the all-new 1992 Toyota Camry. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. Jordan drives and misses. Michael throws it away. Jordan falls. This is a nightmare. Huh? You want to be sure of your game. You also want whole grain nutrition. Wheaties is made with 100% whole grain. These cereals are not. So if you want to rest a little easier, better get your whole grain. You better eat your Wheaties. Auburn meets SEC rival Tennessee and USC battles Oregon in a college football doubleheader next Saturday live on ESPN. Auburn leading 7-0 has had wonderful field position all night. Frazier straight ahead. Runs over a tackler inside the 40, and he's down to the 37-yard line. And let's go down and get an injury report from Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Well, Ron, I'm told by the Texas. Johnson has a hyperextension of his right. Ten seconds goes, just carted off. Take a look at it, probably get some x-rays. Be a big loss for the Texas offensive line. He is looked to as the leader of that unit. So Chuck Johnson, his right knee, a hyperextension. Second down and short. Big opening for McMillan, the sophomore out of Selma. And he barrels down to around the 31-yard line. And that is plenty enough for the first down. Boone Powell on the stop for Texas. Oh, and you've had such great field position like Auburn has. They just have everything possible to do. They started their first two series throwing the football. Now they're running the ball. Bo Robinson and Shane Dronette, the two number one defensive ends, come to the ball game. Wilson and Higgins have come in for a couple of plays. Smith throws it out to his tight end, and Fred Baxter drops it. So that's one for each tight end on balls that hit him right in the breadbasket. Stan White, the sophomore quarterback from Auburn, just gets better and better. He actually has two coaches, Tommy Bowden, who's the offensive coordinator, and then he has Pat Sullivan, the 
excellent quarterback coach of Auburn working with him. So he's the beneficiary of two coaches, so he had a lot of people to talk to when he goes off on the sidelines. And for people asking, why does Pat have on a jacket? It's not that cool. It's so they can see him in the orange. Everybody else is wearing white because he signals in the play. Pass incomplete. Route was run inside by Cherry, and the ball was thrown just the opposite. Auburn scored so easily, and they've had such great field position. The last time they had the ball, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't move it. Had to punt. Tight ends dropped the ball. If Texas could hold them here, they're going to miss some scoring opportunities, and Texas has a chance to get back in this game. But Texas right now just seems to be they unglued a little bit. A player like Shane Drenette right here, number 81, needs to make a big play. Third down, the line to make the Texas 21. Incomplete. Pedro Cherry hit hard by Winnebac Garza. Von Weil is very capable of kicking at this distance. He was doing it in the warm-up. He's four of seven this year. Spent his summer kicking at an upright that was only nine feet wide so that he could be better prepared for the narrow goalpost. This is going to be an attempt of 47 yards. The man you were just talking about blocking. Ron, that's what you need out of an All-American. Seeing Burnett just turned this game around, and if you're Pat Dye on the Auburn sideline, you've seen two excellent field position opportunities slip away that may come back to bite you. Pass strong complete. Good for 10 yards and for the first time tonight Texas is in Auburn territory. Let's take another look at the block right up the middle. With the team not being used in college football, you have to get a high arc on it right away. Seems Renette comes in, blocks the field goal, gives Texas offense an excellent opportunity. Peter Gardier starts off with a nice pass, play action pass, for good yardage. Jeanette blocked it. His co-defensive tackle, Patton, is the one who picked it up and started to run. Wide open, the tight end is caught at the 12-yard line, Burleson. Ron, it looked to me like that was very close to being out of bounds, but a great throw by Peter Gardier. Here's the fake that Butch had not. You see the tight end running free, Jason Burleson. Watch the catch here. No, good call. He's in. Had the one foot in it, but I'm sure Peter was saying in his mind, I got him wide open, oh. and I almost threw it out of bounds. Wide open. Had not. Oh, my goodness, that's Crawford. Boy, 56. He has 31 tackles after two football games, and you could hear the contact up here. You probably could hear it at home. He really comes strong. When you're in a 4-3 defense, the linebackers make the tackle. The defensive line funnels everything to them. Lynn Amadee's doing an excellent job of keeping the Auburn defense off balance. Gardere will run for a couple. Knocked down at the 10-yard line, and now Texas looks at a third-down situation, and they need the two-yard line. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten. Glad to have you along from Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, as a full moon is about to brew over the top of this uh, packed house. Ron, they may do the same thing here that Auburn did to them. Drag the tight end across underneath. A little play action, draw the tight end across the middle, try to catch him in man-to-man -man coverage and get him free. 76, Walter Tate. 
checks in for the ball game. First time we've seen him tonight. Verdeer. That's Tate, and he will sack him at the 12-yard line. Tate with a two-game suspension, and Pat Dye said he wondered what things would be like when he got him back. He thinks he's still overweight, but I'll tell you, I think I'd let him play overweight if he can produce like that. Pat Dye has to feel pretty good about having him on the team playing. Walter Tate comes in and makes the play. There's just nobody open. Just good coverage. Walter Tate comes off the block, makes the play. Jason Ziegler to attempt a 29-yarder. He was two for two at Mississippi State, 44 and 22 yards. And he is no good. Off to the left. Well, it's time now for a weekly presentation of the Toyota Leadership Award. And today's winners from Auburn University, Pedro Cherry. He's a junior from Windsor, North Carolina. He received the Greg Pratt Award for the freshman minority student athlete with the highest GPA, and he's a member of Phi Eta Sigma. And for the University of Texas, Scott Gooch. He's a senior from Bridge City, Texas. He's a member of Big Brothers Big Sisters, the Adopt-A-School program, and is a volunteer at the Ronald McDonald Children's Hospital. Toyota, pleased to donate $1,000 to each player's school and their general scholarship fund. Well, as they get it sorted out, let's take one more look at the missed field goal. Miss field goal run and as I said before an offense who's struggling needed points on the board they had a good drive the coaches need to pull them over the side and tell them that we had a nice drive we just got to hang in there there's a dejected kicker Mounds and Richardson are the setbacks on this trip for the Auburn Tigers James Patton makes the stop defensively as the running play will go in the vicinity of the 28-yard line. And now it is going to be a second down for Auburn. Ron, I went up to spring practice, and Pat Dye was telling me about Joe Frazier, the tailback. He was a middle guard in high school, and a guidance counselor from over Montgomery called him about him, and he gave him a scholarship, and look at now, he's the starting tailback. He never ran the ball in high school either, did he? McMillan, that lane, and he will have the first down as he fights it out to the 35-yard line. Anthony Curl and Bo Robinson there to make the tackle. I understand he was in on two offensive plays in high school, but he never carried the ball. No, this is all new to him, so he's just going to continue to improve. Pat Dye really liked him in spring. I don't think in the spring when I was at Auburn that he felt like he'd be a starting tailback, but he is just blossoming. and Pat just feels like he's getting better all the time. See at Arkansas. It's first down. See the Arkansas score. Their trail in Southwest Louisiana, 7-6. That game is now in the fourth quarter. It's a rough day for the conference. Has it? Has it ever been? Stan White dodged one and it got very smart. The radar said go to the ground and I think he was wise in doing so. Tommy Jeter made the tackle. Mike, explain this. This is something when they run from that from that shotgun formation, it is almost like the old single wing stuff. Players of this day and age haven't seen much of that. When you see a team go into shotgun, you automatically believe they're going to throw the football. Auburn does a fine job of the first three games of running their draws their counters everything they run out of the eye offense they run out of the, of the uh, shotgun so if they really put you a little bit of a disadvantage because when they go into shotgun you'd like to have an extra defensive back and they don't allow you to because they run the ball so well seven to nothing Auburn leads 438 left opening quarter gets it out to his running back that's Frazier and it's going to be short of the first down. We'll call it third down and two. Is Pageant and Curl, two of the linebackers, there to make the hit for Texas. You see uh, Auburn in the shotgun. Watch Stan White lift his foot. What he's telling his center, the center's looking back. 
Now the center can move his head up, and he snaps it when he's ready and not when the quarterback's ready. That means all the Auburn players have to look in at the ball. When the ball moves, then they can release and go and run the offensive play. Third down. They need the 50. Auburn 0 of 2 in third down conversion so far. Pitch back to Frazier. Oh, what a hit by Michael Padgett. Good heavens. Well, it's two series that defensively players have come up big, but now it is incumbent upon the, the Texas offense to respond, Mike. Well, the Auburn defense responded, and now Texas defense comes back. Michael Padgett makes the play, but what made that play was the penetration of the defensive line against the offensive line of Auburn. Off the side of his foot. Garza on the run will pick up an extra three yards and then goes out of bounds. So let's take a break. 314 left opening quarter. Tigers on top. The state capital of Texas. But right now it is shining on Auburn. Is that a harvest moon from Alabama? Seven to nothing is our score. As you look at Daryl Crawford. With very intense eyes. Gardeer in the short drop. It is intercepted, and he will score. Corey Barlow threw it right to him. Yesterday afternoon, Pat Dye talked about it, what a good cover guy he was. And here he just he gets a free one. That ball is so far behind the receiver, it was it was almost like he was throwing to it. Just a bad decision by Peter Gardier was to throw a quick pass, quick slant, threw it behind Derek Duke, Corey Barlow, intercepts it, a big play for the Auburn defense. Van Dyke knocks it home. And with 3.07 left in this opening quarter, it is Auburn 14 to nothing. Well, let's take, a, take another look at that, Ron, on the quick pass. Peter Gardier, just a three-step drop. He's throwing, but he must not see Corey Cor Barlow because he just threw it right out there and threw it behind the receiver. Again, maybe a busted route, but I don't think so. I think a poor thrown pass. Well, be sure to join us next Saturday for an evening doubleheader of college football. First of all, Mike and I will be in Knoxville, Tennessee, with the same Auburn Tiger team. We'll meet Tennessee, who had a rough time with Mississippi State today, and they will be playing in, in front of the 90-plus thousand spectators at Neyland Stadium. Now, that's at 7.30 Eastern time. Then at 11 o'clock, the Southern Cal Trojans travel to Eugene, Oregon, to take on the quack attack of the Oregon Ducks. And Steve Fiziak and Gary Danielson will be there. So that's our doubleheader next Saturday evening here on ESPN. 14 to nothing, the Auburn Tigers lead. And we have not yet played 12 minutes of football. Jimmy Saxon, now a tough, a tough situation for David McWilliams. Will we see Jimmy Saxon in the ballgame at quarterback? I don't are you, think Are yet. you to a half-two situation or do you, do you stick with Gardier? I don't think so yet because when he pulls Peter Gardier, that confidence is shot. So he has to go in him a little bit longer. When you pull your starting quarterback, you're pretty well telling him you got a question in your mind whether he's the guy. Kick comes to Adrian Walker, two yards deep. Walker will bring it to the 21 as Morton is downfield on the special team. Adrian Walker out of Tyler Chapel Hill. What this young man needs is something good to happen for him. But the whole offense, you start to question everything when you had so little success that they're having offensively. You question the formations. You question everything you're doing. But they have a good enough defense to keep them in this ball game. But something good has to happen to this offense or they're going to be in there for a long, long night. Pitch to Hadnot. Oh, he turns the corner and what a stick. That is Fred Smith, the freshman out of Ufala, Ufala, Alabama. And let's go to Timmy Brando. Ron, it has been a long, tough week for Curly Holman, the LSU Tiger head coach. It's getting longer and tougher against Vanderbilt. Marcus Wilson, 30 yards to Anthony Carter. The Commodores lead the Tigers at Tiger Stadium 7-0. Another wow. 
<laughs> I tell you, there, there shouldn't be any surprise because the first three weeks, what is an upset? Nobody yeah. knows what an upset is. That's it. We should run a contest. Define upset. Well, that man right there is upset, I would imagine. Lynn Amity, the offensive coordinator for Texas. Harns. Unless they drew Auburn offside, are going to get a free five yards. Alonzo Etheridge jumped. He's a freshman from Selma. Yep, offside against the Tigers. Joe Thomas. One thing, when you, when you spot that man 14 points like Texas has to this point, his defensive coordinator, Wayne Hall. Dead ball. play a very sound defense not take a lot of chances with that 14 nothing lead so you've got to work the field now to score against Auburn you're not going to get anything cheap about to hit the two minute mark of this opening quarter very long first period and I'm sure for Texas fans it has been even longer had not got to be tackled from behind and is not going to have the first down that's Etheridge who jumped offside just a moment ago and from where they're spotting it, it is about a half yard shy. Seven carries now for only 21 yards for Hedna. If I'm Lynn Amity, I stay right with this game plan. I, I just stay, give the ball to Butch Hadnot, occasionally throw some play action passes because that'll get me back in this game. If I go wild and start throwing the football, this game's going to end quick. Texas 0 of 3 on third downs. not and he might have yep from the mark from the spotting from this side as Daryl Crawford came up and hit him now number 36 Adrian Walker checked in and that means something usually when he comes under the clock <laughs> when Adrian Walker comes in they're usually going to throw the football Butch Hadnot comes out Butch Hadnot's going to earn every yard he gets tonight against this Auburn defense they are quick and strong very cool tonight. Pat Dye told us yesterday he was hoping to be 95 because it's been so desperately hot over in Auburn. This time Walker runs and he gets smothered at the line of scrimmage. Chucky Johnson, one of the first men there to make the hit, along with Eskridge, number 91. Auburn has so many defensive linemen, they just keep shuttling them in. Uh, they just they all look about the same too about six five about 270 and they all run very well it's like they used to say about UCLA quarterbacks in this case at Auburn it's called central casting I need another six five 275 pound defensive lineman all right Gardier drops the ball and gets back on it at the 27 good heavens there's not much else that can go wrong for the youngster. Every, every mistake just compounds the situation. Harry's going to take a snap. He pulled out too soon. You could see him. He was on his heels. He pulled away from the center. He's struggling, and that's probably a good idea to have Lynn Amity down there on the sideline to try to settle him down. The quarter ends. So that's the end of the first 15 minutes. And we'll take a timeout with our score. The Tigers of Auburn, 14, and the Texas Longhorns, nothing. Memorial Stadium, 14 to nothing. Texas trailing to Auburn right now. They look at a third down, the line to make, the 42. at the line of scrimmage and it will be fourth down John Wilson number 72 and let's get another report from Tim Brando all right Ron thank you very much quickly we've had already Texas A&M upset today take a look at Baylor in the first quarter leading Missouri by a score of seven to nothing David Mims a six yard TD run Arkansas only up over southwest Louisiana nine to seven here's a news flash the raging Cajuns are not in the SEC <laughs> good point Tim Bailey is the deep man for Auburn. Calls a fair catch. Now takes an Auburn bounce. And the Tigers will pick up about 10 yards on that. And so far, everything is going in Auburn's direction. When it rains, it pours. The punt just hit on the turf. Came back. Cost him 10 yards. A 
Adrian Carston with another update for us. Let's go to the field. Ron, thank you very much. Maybe one of the reasons Auburn's playing such wild defense out here, they have played no less than 10 defensive linemen in the first quarter alone. they got to be playing fresh. The 95 degrees all over there all week long. They're getting a good ball once they get a chance to play. Orlando Parker was the pass intended for. A stand for a very pretty pass and knocked away. Good job defensively by the Texas secondary. And I would imagine it. Bobby Jack Wright, the defensive secondary coach, with a little sigh of relief. There you see the play action pass. They're going for the home run. They're trying to put this one over quick. But Bubba Jacks, number 25, you'll see him, the free safety, breaks on the ball and gets there just in time to try to get into the face of the receiver. Bubba Jacks, a former option quarterback from Conroe High School, just north of Houston. Frazier and a flag comes down and that is thrown by the umpire as Curl is there to make the tackle on Frazier. Normally that is offensive holding. We'll see. <laughs> Pat Dye asking who? Well, when you have a split crew, he's thinking himself, the uh, you know, the umpire. But, the umpire's uh, SEC, I right, believe, right? He's thinking that's why he's not yelling. Offense! Still second down. So now Otis Mounds, number 25, checks into the ball game. The tailback, Tony Richardson, is a sophomore from Daleville, Alabama, comes in at fullback. Richardson, last year when we televised Auburn several times, a fullback that they really think a lot of, but it's been McMillan who has been starting in front of him. On the shotgun, White drills it, has it complete. It's Herbert Casey at the 42-yard line. And with White's mobility and using the shotgun formation, that seems like that would be terribly difficult to stop, Mike. Well, they're using the shotgun offense, but I'll tell you what they do here. They roll him to the left so that you're never sure where he's going to be. He's not a drop back. He drops back sometimes. He rolls to the left sometimes, the right, and the play action. So it's very difficult to draw a bead to send a stunt to try to get after him. You might have seen number 73, Tim Tillman, the left guard, had pulled out in front of his quarterback. <laughs> Frazier, his running back. Boone Powell makes the tackle at the 49-yard line. Not nearly enough for the first down, so the offensive holding penalty stops the Auburn Tigers, and George will come on to punt. <laughs> Willie Mac Garza, the junior from Refurio, Texas. Texas comes after the punter, and it's off the side of his foot. Second time this has happened to him tonight. And it's going to go dead at the 30. 20 yards in the kick. 12.56 left until halftime. Tigers by a pair of touchdowns. trip for two to the thrifty car rental holiday bowl including five days in sunny san diego you'll see a great game visit sea world and drive away in a 1992 chrysler lebaron convertible to enter stop by any thrifty car rental location or fill out the official entry form in select monday editions of usa today or simply print your name and address on a three by five card and mail to this address round trip air transportation provided by us air I can't tell you how it feels when you're way out there on your own tracking the bad guys. How it feels leading a skilled team that's the eyes and ears of the whole outfit. When all your training is coming alive. But finding those tanks and telling the air cavalry right where to hit them. I can tell you exactly how that feels.
ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Auburn versus Texas, is brought to you by Subaru. It's what to drive. And by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. The numbers on Peter Gardere, three of six with one interception, 43 yards. Ronnie's bringing in his two speed receivers and look for Justin McLemore, number 22, to be involved in this series. First time that number two Mike Davis has played this year. He used a speedster, but has been hampered by an ankle injury. Gardere rolls the pocket, throws for his tight end, and Burleson just gets annihilated. Let's go back to Tim Brando. Ron, if you're going to play Big Red in a big game, do it in November, not September. They are dynamite 9-0 and in big games in the month of September. There's Derek Brown, 27 yards to scamper. Huskers up 7-0. Well, Tim, I told Lee Corso that. I know it's early in the game. I'm going to take a little credit because that score can change in the next you, two you seconds. You think you might not be able to take credit later, huh? <laughs> no, I want to tell you now before it changes. That's what I mean. 14 to nothing, our score. Hadnock tries to get outside, and every time he makes a turn, it's a great second effort. But he was knocked out of bounds. First man to hit him was Anthony Judge. Then Fred Smith came up. And Hadnot has been a tough man to bring down. He just needs that one more block, it looks like, Mike. He's using that 214 pounds, but he's going to be sore tomorrow because he takes some hits. There's one. There's two. There's three. Number 13 misses him, and he gets another one as he goes out of bounds down the field. You know, I didn't realize he was that close to staying in. If he does stay in, he scores. There was nobody left. Ten carries, 29 yards for him. Pass is caught at the 48-yard line. First catch for Mike Davis this year. He's the man that they have to have healthy. Now, here's where I think the game changes for Texas a little bit. Now, if it doesn't change here, I think Auburn's in for uh, uh, an easy night. But you bring in your two receivers, Mike Davis and Justin McLemore. They have speed, Ron, so they can push the corners back, which should open some things in the passing game for Peter Gardier. Great point. Should open things also for maybe a running game. a lot of mistakes and you think about the open date what effect that has on a team Texas with the open date last week some coaches like it some coaches don't David McWilliams told us the other day he liked it when you when you have an open date it's a time for a coach you can change some things you can add some things you can improve or you can like David McWilliams says you can get their attention and I, and that's what he tried to do. You, you were saying that he scrimmaged a lot last week. You know, he also lost another reserve linebacker. Texas has lost all three number two linebackers. Have not again to the short side of the field as Texas runs into the boundary. And there's just not much there as Auburn doing a good job defensively again. It's Pierce, number 97, a junior from Valdosta, Georgia, who makes the tackle. Lynn Amity is going to have to do something to slow down that pursuit. A reverse, some type of counter just to slow the Auburn linebackers down. They're just drawing a beat on Butch Hadnock. You know, the other point about the open date that Coach McWilliams made was he said he had two or three people that would not have been ready to play because of injuries last week. But the player said they wanted to play hot school. Jardier misses Burleson a little bit high. And he, he had him open as the defensive back was trailing. Burleson, a former quarterback, in fact, a good all-around athlete. He played some running back, some quarterback, and now they have him at tight end. I think that ball was thrown pretty good. That, what Wayne Hall did on that play, the defensive coordinator at Auburn, has fired his corner, Fred Smith. He figures he's got a quarterback that's a little shaky. I might as well get after him a little bit and try to slow his progress and slow his confidence level down. Texas, two of six on third down conversions, and they need the Auburn 41.
They called a timeout, and Jeff Boyd, the right guard, is signaling that he needs to take himself out of the ball game. Well, I'm not so sure they didn't get a delay a game call here. That's what Adrian Walker was trying to get Peter Gardier's attention. He gave Joe Thomas just said uh, before the delay. <laughs> so the Army storyline looks like this. Hall of Auburn 25 yard touchdown cast. Then Barlow of Auburn with the 29 yard touchdown return of an interception. And Texas missed on a 29 yard field goal. And probably something else to be put down on that storyline is Gardere had Burleson as tight end eight yards behind the secondary of Auburn and threw the pass so close to the boundary it took him out of bounds rather than going for a touchdown and they wound up getting no points. Sometimes it's a receiver's fault at the angle he leads you to believe that he's heading in but Peter Gardere needed to throw that up the field more and let his tight end adjust to the ball. 14 to nothing if you've just joined us 1150 left to play until halftime and Auburn has done a very good job of keeping this home Texas crowd out of the game. He's going to be sacked that's Fred Smith. Coming up from his right cornerback spot the second time that Gardere has been sacked tonight. Texas offense can't afford to get in third and 12. They just can't afford it because their pass offense is not good enough to get them out of those situations. Thomas Bailey is back deep as he awaits the punt from Kelly McClanahan. His best kick of the night, far and away, all the way back to the 12 yard line. And for the first time this evening, Auburn will have to scrimmage from very deep in their own territory. So let's take a break. Tigers, 14 to nothing. Along with Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten from Austin, Texas. Frazier and McMillan, the setbacks for Auburn. Gets it out to McMillan and Boone Powell, number 56, is right there to knock him down. Fine defensive play by Powell, who is a senior from Duncanville, Texas. You mentioned the fact that he was going to see the tight ends a lot off the top of the telecast. Obviously, he's going to see the running backs as well. Jimmy Saxton. Warming up on the sideline, the backup quarterback for Texas. What Texas might do is bring in their second team offense and let Jimmy Saxton come in and then play a series. We'll see what happens. McMillan off the running play, the handoff from the shotgun formation, and he is close to the first down. Shane Dronette defensively. Auburn wants balance. As I said before, you see him in a shotgun, you automatically think pass. Uh, but that's not the way it is. They'd like to have a 50-50 split, and they're getting it in their offense. They're going to be tough. They're going to be a tough team to contend with if this offense continues to get better because I think defensively they've always been strong. That is Fred Baxter, the junior from Brundage, Alabama. Coming in a tight end, he joins Victor Hall. Frazier hit in the backfield and again it is drawn net who was there to make the big defensive play. Third and short tried to go outside on the pitch. Texas was ready for him and again when you're looking for a player who's a Excellent player, look for Shane Jornet, number 81, and Michael Padgett, the linebacker, number 52, will get it. But again, penetration is what caused that play. I think also 92, James Patton, as Texas goes after the punt again, was there with pressure. Here comes Garza. Boy, the Auburn special teams playing a heck of a game tonight as they will stop him cold just shy of the 45. Ron, an interesting thing on the Auburn special team situation. A graduate assistant named Tommy Ray is the special team coach. Pat Dye likes him so well, he turned it all over to him. 
the cheer that you hear going up right now is everybody loves a backup quarterback and that is exactly what has happened as Jimmy Saxon whose father was an all-American running back at this school comes in to direct the Texas offense he's an option quarterback so let's see if they go to the option Clarence Morton, a junior from Maplesville, Alabama, is there to make the hit. That's exactly what they're doing now. Now you have a different game plan with Jimmy Saxton. If you're Lynn Amity, now you start calling option plays. You start calling play action plays off the option. Now if you're Auburn and Wayne Hall, you have to adjust your defense a little bit because now it's not a power running game. It's an option attack. Spinning forward, great second and third effort. He'll have the first down. With, with Saxon coming into the ball game, it appeared right there that Pat Dye's defense. All of a sudden, we're seeing a 50 defense again. They will go to a 50 defense and try to help on the option. Here, Butch had that. He comes up limping after this play. As I said before, a big strong back. They try to strip the ball out of his hands. But the tough thing is when he came out of that tackle he was hurt and came off to the sidelines so had not been attended to on the near sideline we'll get a report as Wilson and Walker will be the setbacks Adrian Walker And that's the longest gainer on the ground for Texas tonight. I know why these Texas fans are cheering. They're, they're option football people. They, they're a royal, and they love the option. Here you see the pitch out to Adrian Walker. He breaks a tackle and picks up good yardage. Fred Smith, number six, makes the tackle. Option football of the Southwest Conference. David McWilliams goes and puts pressure on defenses. slides out of bounds at the 30 and again Mike explain this to us the fans at home sit there and say why do you run into the boundary why do you run to the short side of the field rather than the open side well, a lot of times you choose to run into the boundary because Auburn will move their defense to the wide side of the field so you have an extra man to block on the wide side of the field what every defensive coach figures is a sideline will be their extra man in the short side but they're forcing you to run the short side because of their defensive alignment at the 21. I beg your pardon. It is Texas football. Thought for the world that that defensive back from Auburn had gotten on it. But Fred Smith made the tackle. Texas makes the recovery and that is enough for the first down. There you see the give to Adrian Walker. Now he becomes the workhorse with Butch had not injured and he just drops the football very fortunate to get that one back Walker continued with his momentum and knocked the defensive back off the ball Peter Gardner looks on from the sideline Walker that's Crawford number 56 along with Fred Smith who come up to make the stop what you always tell your players you're a role player. When you get your opportunity, Jimmy Saxon, make the most of it. Peter Gardier, you go to the sideline right now, you help Jimmy Saxon when he comes out of the ball game. Your opportunity may come back again. But football players, because you only have 11 on the field at one time, everybody needs to help everybody, and everybody needs to stay up. The situation, if you just joined us, six minutes and 25 seconds left to play in the first half. It is Auburn 14, Texas nothing. The Longhorns drive with the ball set up second down at the Auburn 17. Pass incomplete, intended for Derek Duke at around the seven yard line. Corey Barlow, who had the interception for a touchdown, is out there to make the, the play. 
Yeah. James Willis, number 51, 6'3", 231, another line. I think it just seemed like they just send in different defensive guys all the time, but he put the pressure on Jimmy Saxon. If I'm, if I'm calling offense right now, I'm going to think in terms of two plays here. I'm going to try to get, get this first down with two rushing plays. One would be the option. They're down. They need the 12. Saxon takes it in on the third down and five. Look a lot like his his, his father, who's an All-American running back here, tiptoeing down the sidelines. Jason Ziegler with the extra point attempt. He's good. And all of a sudden we have a ball game with 6-0-1 left until halftime as Saxon comes in and engineers a 56-yard drive. If you get one more look at it, they reverse the option. Scott Gooch out front of the block. And he outruns the secondary and takes it in for the touchdown. He's 56 yards, just over three minutes on the drive. And all 56 yards came on the ground. Nothing in the air. That's the first touchdown of 1991 for the Parker. Van Malone goes topside to make the hit at the 25-yard line. South Carolina, Sparky Woods Club leading by seven as they go into the third quarter. Virginia Tech had a tough loss off the start of the season, losing to NC State seven to nothing. So they're in for another tough ball game tonight. They had a win over James Madison, the opening game. Frazier has five. Bo Robinson. The junior from Bremont, Texas, comes up to make the stop, but that's a gain of six, almost seven yards in the play. The Auburn offensive line, maybe we should give credit and talk a little bit more about them because their surge has been consistent and very good tonight, Mike. Well, when you think of this Auburn line, just think of also they should have Ed King back. He's that's the right. underclassman who went with the Cleveland Browns, so uh, they lost a, a big-time football player in King. McMillan. Nope. Great fake, and he throws to the tight end. And Hall is going to be driven all the way back to the 29. Let's see what they're giving forward progress as the official over there marking the play got run into. He is shaken up, and the trainer comes out to take a look at him. He, either they were slow on the whistles or something happened because everybody kept going. Here you see the tight end. They do such a good job underneath with the tight end. And the reason he's open is Boone Powell has him man to man, and he started inside. And Boone Powell got caught up in whether it was going to be a run or not. It was Lance Gunn who wound up finishing him off. We talked off the top of the telecast about he was a larger, strong safety at 225 pounds. It's enough for the Auburn first down. McMillan breaks it up the middle and he is close to another Auburn first down. And here again is Mr. Brando. Ron, you'll recall the right ring finger of Tony Sacco was injured last week against USC, but you needn't worry about him. Here he is, a nice look in, actually an out route to Terry Smith. For a touchdown against BYU, they lead it 10-0 in the second quarter, so stay tuned. Boy, BYU has started off with such a tough schedule. He really hit. McMillan upended at the line of scrimmage, and Auburn will look at a third down, and I guess about half a yard to pick up the first down. Mike, you know, they got stunned a little bit in that uh, 
game against Texas A&M in the bowl game. And they haven't really played well since then. No, they really haven't. And here you see Tommy Jeter come up the field and just, he's the one that stopped that play. I was just thinking as you, we were talking that Auburn has had such success on offense, but where they haven't had success is third and short yardage, which they're in right now. And they only need about a couple of feet here. They throw it complete to the tight end, and Baxter will have the first down. And quarterback Stan White got knocked down very hard back at the 40 after he got the pass away. Well, the third and short yardages before, they were getting stuffed. Texas was getting so much penetration. So they came back on this play. Pat Dye's offense just faked the toss play that they had stopped earlier and threw the ball to Fred Baxter on a delay route to the tight end. 334 left until halftime. Auburn leads 14 to 7. Tommy Jeter meandering back from the Auburn backfield. Offside against Offside Texas. Against the Hawks. Quarterback gets you the rhythm of the count. Offside, defense, first down. Quarterback can do that with voice inflection, a good one. And here you got a sophomore that's able to do that. He, he's just going to get better and better, which is bad news for the Southeastern Conference coaches. Take your right. He really likes his new offensive coordinator, Tommy Bowden. Really seem to be on the same, same page. Chemistry. Yeah. Breaks one tackle, still spinning. Bo Robinson brings him down. That's at the 39-yard line. Well, Shane Drenet just came up the field on a stunt and just really took the fullback on. Outstanding play, almost stopped that play by himself. Forced it inside. Jeff Higgins is the man who made the stop. That's number four, Dale Overton. He is from Hackleburg, Alabama. 5'9", senior, brings the play in. If I'm Texas, I'm going to be very concerned about both tight ends in this. Keep my eye on Fred Baxter. They faked the run, and he... Got Higgins to go for the fake. Auburn will have the first down. 31 Higgins just came straight inside and ran right by him. Well, they've done such a good job on third yard, third down and short yardage of blitzing. Again, a good call by the Auburn offense. They know they're blitzing on third down. They know it's tough to run, so they ran a naked play. It was a run all the way to the quarterback. Arkansas wins 9-7. to TCU. What a tough situation for them as they lost their, their quarterback, their starter last week. Rice is ahead. You were talking about the job Fred Goldfred Fred, has done. It. Rice. Fred has done a magnificent job at that score. Rice tossed that one goes high. He wanted Herbert Casey. That one just got away from him a little, little bit. And you see him telling Casey, I wanted you to slide a little more toward the sideline. I like this Auburn offense. I really do. I think they've got some imagination in it. I think they're going to keep defenses on their toes. They move the quarterback pocket around. They run the ball with some good success. They have two outstanding tight ends that they can use on underneath routes. What they need to really develop is a tailback running game. That's the only thing I think they lack at this point. Mike, this is the 10th play of the drive. Halftime report coming up with Tim Brando and Lee Corso. Tony Richardson at the 34-yard line. That will bring up a third down. And if you're Texas, do you call the timeout or do you let it continue to run? If I'm Texas, I let it run. <laughs> if I'm Auburn, I may think of a timeout. <laughs> They're going to spot the ball at the 35. I guess what I was alluding to as far as momentum with the with the offense. Now, if I'm Texas, I want to, I want to figure out how I can get to this scoreboard guy up here to knock off by 20 seconds. 
Point well taken, coach. Almost intercepted by Anthony Curl. He might have kept on running, just headed on into the locker room at halftime. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Anthony Curl, you're going to see him break on the ball. This might have been the first bad pass I've seen Stan White throw tonight, and it's not that bad. It's just a good job defensively by Anthony Curl. Almost knocked the ball up, kept it in play. Von Weil will attempt a 52-yard field goal and a 48-yarder against Georgia Southern. He has maybe, if there is any wind at all, a little bit of a follow in. Texas will be trying to come up inside to block another one. And it is blocked. James Patton has his headgear off, and I think he is the one who blocked it. He recovered the fumble the last time when Dronette blocked the field goal. Yep. They've got such a surge up inside. The place kicker has no chance. Uh, watch this offensive line. Look at him come inside. Dranette is the guy who is causing this. Gets his hand you know, up. That and is blocks the kick. It. He's the one that got the surge up inside. Got his hand up. And block. That's two, about four big plays by that young man tonight. Two block kicks. You wow. can't stamp everybody All-American because there'd be 9,000 All-Americans like there's 9,000 Heisman guys every week. But this guy is legit. He's a great football player. Saxon to throw. Has it complete to Burleson at the 49-yard line. Gain of 14. Elvin Lindblad, our statistician, just told me that since Saxton came in the ball game, even before that play, which picked up 14, the Texas offense has been averaging seven yards a play. Well, he's ignited him. It's like we were talking about. These fans are probably all saying, hey, we knew it all the time. <laughs> yeah. But it's not that easy. There's a chemistry. There's a, a timing is everything. And they pulled the right, pushed the right button with this move. Right now, they better hurry up. The clock is under one minute. Saxon throws it complete, and his receiver starts heading for the sideline as Sutton tackles Kenny Neal. Now Kenny Neal is the only non-Texas player on the Longhorn roster. Everybody else is from the Lone Star State. Did you know that? Yes, I, we were told that today, and, and you told us, and I, I think the thing about when you look at Texas high school football, it's so great. I know when we were at Pittsburgh, we wanted to get in here to recruit. So let's take a break. 32 seconds left until halftime joined us here is our situation 32 seconds remaining until halftime it is Auburn 14 and Texas 7 the Longhorns with a second down at the Auburn 43 and a half yard line they have one time out to use Adrian Walker going to be stopped at the 41 yard line we have not seen had not since he came up limping on that play. Hurry up offense for Texas. Losing too much time here. Ten seconds remaining. Just now what they have to do, Ryan, is try to either throw the ball down the field to get the out route or just take a shot at throwing it to the end zone. With Ten seconds. To some kind of route where they get the ball out of bounds. Of course, they'll get the chains moving, and they still have their timeout. Don't forget, coming up at the halftime, Tim Brando and Lee Corso will give you the latest update on the games in progress and recap what else happened in college football today. to have your two minute drill be a little bit better than this but you got to remember now you got your second team quarterback in. he doesn't get as many snaps in the game and he's an option quarterback so now I have usually one thing to do now you have to throw it down the football field they're trying to get 
trying to decide whether they want to punt the football or run it or what. They still haven't got the play into Jimmy Saxon. I'm just going to pump it on down the field. So it's fourth down. I'd look for some kind of run here just to run the clock out. I think that's what they'll probably do. Saxon drills it. Kenny Neal at the 34-yard line. Two seconds down to one, and they stop the clock. Got a chance for the field goal. Good call. Jason Ziegler will be attempting the field goal, and E, what are we going to have as far as distance? Looks like in the vicinity of 50 yards is where they're going to put it down, at around the 40. Ron, no matter what happens here, Jimmy Saxon comes out of this half with a lot of confidence, and the Texas offense has confidence now. So you could see a lot different game plan in the second half than we saw in the first quarter that we did see a little bit of in the second quarter. They'll give them a chance to adjust and add some more things to what they want to do. Ziegler 0 for 1 tonight. He did hit two against Mississippi State, 44 and 22. This one would be a career long for him. It's a, an attempt at 50. Not going to make it well to the right and short. So as they head to the locker room, the two biggest scoring plays in this first half, one came on defense by the Auburn Tigers as Corey Barlow stepped in front of a Peter Gardner pass, and this is what happened. Like he threw it right to him. He will take it 29 yards for the touchdown. At this juncture, the Tigers were up 14 to nothing. But then Jimmy Saxton came off the bench, and the youngster from Austin Westlake takes it in for the touch. Let's take a break. It's halftime in Austin. Time is the Auburn Tigers leading over Texas by a count of 14 to 7. Mike, I thought a play that was very big right toward the end of the half with Texas gaining momentum. A five-yard delay of game penalty, and Jason Ziegler had to wind up attempting a 50-yard field goal rather than 45. Mentally, there is a lot of difference there. You're right, Ron. The kicking game really has hurt both teams. The two block field goals by Texas have really been big plays. Shane Drenette gets his hand on the field goal. They get such a surge up inside, and there's no chance to get any height on the ball by the kicker. So good job. Now, what Texas has also done a good job is they come in with the second-team quarterback, Jimmy Saxon. Here's the option play, the counter option. Gets, he gets good blocking, but the problem that it will give Auburn is that they didn't practice against the option as much as the drop-back game and the power game. Statistics are pretty well even. If you look for one big play in the game to this point, other than the blocked field goals, it was the interception by Auburn, Corey Barlow, for the touchdown that has changed this game. Jimmy Saxton on the Texas sideline, loosening up. I mentioned that. Jimmy played at Westlake High School. Westlake is a, a suburb just to the west of Austin, so he is he is local. And let's go down to Adrian Karsten and get an update from down on the field. Adrian. Spoke with uh, Coach McWilliams. Here's the situation. He decided to start again with uh, Jimmy Saxon here in the second half. The offensive line of Texas is really banged up. They've got two bruised knees, and Butch Hadnot now has got a deep bruise of his ankle bone. He was expected to come back late in the first half. It was retaped. They took the tape off. He left, went back to the locker room before the end of the first half. He is now not expected to play in the third quarter. Rod. Okay, Adrian. You know, we got 30 minutes more football right here, but Texas has still another open date next week. Coach Mac Williams might be uh, counting his blessings again where the injury list is mounted. They're going to need it, Ron. Adrian Walker. And Texas, with a good return, will have good field position around the 34-yard line as Jimmy Saxton stops to talk with Lynn Amity and get last-minute instructions. Go a little further on the point that you were making about Auburn preparing for a different offense, for a different kind of attack. What kind of adjustments did Wayne Hall and Pat make at halftime? Well, I think the adjustments he had to make because he was facing a drop back passing team and a power running team. Now you're facing an option team and your corners are on islands. That's why he was able to throw the ball so well because you have to have the run support out of both of the safeties on the inside. So they have to make some adjustments. They'll go to more 4-3 defense.
pass tip incomplete. That was Kenny Neal that he was looking for. A couple of offensive linemen who have been changed because of injuries. Boyd came out. We showed him coming to the sideline in the second quarter. Dwayne Whetstone, who was a sophomore from Henderson, Texas, number 75. You see him right there. And Alan Luther, number 65, came in replacing Chuck Johnson, who was injured earlier on. Allen is a junior out of uh, Houston, 6'4", 282 pounds. Benny Price is there defensively to make sure that one doesn't go any further. And now the Longhorns are going to be confronted with the third down, and they need the 44. It's going to be about seven yards to pick up. It's an interesting call on first down by Texas to come out, spread out, and throw the football. Uh, I look for him again now to come back to something with to McLemore or Davis on the outside because they'll have one-on-one -on -one coverage because of the threat of the option. With Florida, another team, number five in the nation, they get shocked by Syracuse today. Tough place to play at Syracuse in the dome. Jackson on third down, delivers it. Curtis Tripp is tight end down to the 31-yard line. 31 yards in the play. Now Texas is going to get their tight ends involved like Auburn did in the first half. There you see Jimmy Saxon on a drop back pass. He's looking for Curtis Drift to come across the middle. Here he comes. Linebacker trailing him. Number 56, Darrell Crawford. Good game by Texas. They're in Auburn territory. Here you see Jimmy Saxon again. Just waited just long enough. He didn't push the panic button. He sat in there. He didn't take off running. He waited till his tight end came open. Playing like he has ice water in his veins. He just come out to me. He hasn't made any mistakes. He, he does seem very cool. He doesn't seem bothered with the situation. As you look at Peter Gardier, and I'll get you to elaborate on that in just a moment about the feelings of a youngster who has to come to the sideline under the circumstances. Adrian Walker behind his blockers, driving inside the 25-yard line. Ron, what's impressive about this drive in the end of the second quarter is, as you mentioned, three offensive linemen hurt out. You got your second team quarterback in. Even, even during the open day week, they couldn't have worked this particular group together. Watch the surge that you get here. And Adrian Walker has just replaced James Butch had not just done a great job just running the football. One thing that, that Texas is very fortunate with, they do have several good running backs. Phil Brown, we have not really seen him today. He's an excellent runner. Ball is fumbled, and Auburn, Benny Price, makes the recovery. Not a, not a good uh, handoff at all. He just ran, and Jimmy Saxon just ran into his fullback. Just didn't get the ball, Patrick Wilson, and... That's the other problem of not working your quarterback sometimes with your first group. Is it just a fumble and that uh, was caused by Walter Tate? Another big play by Walter Tate. White throws it to Frazier and the running back tackled by Pageant over the middle. Also Boone Powell, number 56, was there. Bo Robinson was applying pressure on Stan White. Texas now with two turnovers as you look at Patrick Wilson. Patrick almost got a good bounce of the ball. It looked like it came off the side of Adrian Walker's head here. It almost came back to it. Ron, they play so much one back that this is very uncommon for him to be in the eye formation. And so he just didn't handle it. Big stick at the line of scrimmage. And Tony Richardson just had no place to go. Boone Powell again, number 56, and an update from Tim Brando. Folks, Billy Joe Hobart is having a difficult night in the air. And remember this, Mark Brunel, who's been injured, is available for Don James with a possible national title chance hanging in the balance. Tyrone Leggett picked him off there. It is a 14-6 Husker advantage. Still, Mr. Corso can't say anything to you. <laughs> White drills the pass, incomplete. Here comes the marker, now a second.
Texas has forced Auburn to throw in third and four or less. Pass interference, defense, spot foul, automatic first down. Let's see what happens here. Here's Stan White. He's going to throw just a quick slant in route. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with the official. I don't agree with him much, as you know, but I'll have to agree <laughs> with him here. Mark Berry, who's a very good cover guy, is out of Dallas, a senior. Maybe had the right hand holding on to the jersey from behind. James Patton, number 92, came across. Ron, one thing you teach your center to do, if you ever see a defensive lineman come across, snap the football, catch him in the zone. Get the penalty, the five-yard penalty. David McWilliams. Texas is off. Stan White just goes down on one knee. The center never snapped the ball, but they came over and made contact. It's a dangerous down, first and five versus Stan White. Frazier, Bo Robinson hanging on for dear life at the 49. Eddie Blake, number 66, with a good block. Eddie is 6'4", 316 pounds. Played at Northwest Mississippi Junior College. Bobby Franklin was his coach there. Bobby Franklin, the old Ole Miss quarterback, played uh, defensive secondary for the Cleveland Browns later on. I believe that's where Cortez Kennedy went to school also, yeah. and they sent him down to Miami. So he's had a few players go through there. <laughs> First and 10 Auburn for the 49. Frazier running very hard to the 45. Brady Cavanis had to come up and make the stop. And now the most important thing for the Auburn Tigers is the fact that that running game is beginning to click for them. They need the running game. They need the tailback to have a good day. Joe Frazier, he amazes me what he's accomplished. There's Leon Fuller, the defensive coordinator, signaling in his defensive call. Joe Frazier has been impressive. Former middle guard playing tailback in, in this league. Wilson and Higgins have come in at defensive end replacing Robinson and drawn that. Straight ahead with the fullback, and that's McMillan. He kind of lost his footing. Still will pick up close to the first down. They're going to put his knee at the 43-yard line. Clock shows 10:40 left in this third period. Auburn 14, Texas 7. You know that fumble just deflated him a little bit, but the defense now is called on to make a stop. Auburn wants to take advantage. We're in a third and short yardage situation again. Wouldn't be surprised. Stan White throws the football again. to his running back McMillan. <laughs> Willie Mac Garza makes the stop, but it's good for the Auburn first down. Texas is going in with a six-man front on defense and short yardage, and that's why Stan White, and Pat Sullivan, and Tommy Bowden are continually throwing the short pass on third short uh, yardage to pick up the first down. They're going to have to change it on third down, Texas. Seventh play of the drive coming up. I tell you what, I wish. I'm trying not to talk so that we can pick it up with us with a sideline. I would love to hear his cadence to find out exactly what's going on. And let's go to Adrian Carson as Texas calls for the offside. Adrian. Well, Ron, here's exactly what's going on. NCAA rules in college football allow the center to come up and adjust the ball the way he wants it. But the problem is what he does after he rolls the ball and gets the laces up for the quarterback, he's then adjusting the ball again and twitching the ball, drawing the defensive line offsides. Corey Lewis, now he's a backup quarterback, and he throws it back to White, who was wide open. Out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Yeah, there's a Bowden on this, Steph. <laughs> Certainly is, and Pat Dye likes the call. 
when you do things like that, it just opens up your offense more because it puts so much pressure on the defense because you're in a close ball game and they're running a halfback pass back to the quarterback. Remember, man coverage by Texas. The one person they don't have a man on is the quarterback. He's, there's no man coverage on him. That's why he's so wide open. Good call. Frazier, the lone setback as Auburn goes with two tight ends. Frazier, blockers in front. Garza hits him. Ball is loose, still loose. Texas has the football at the 26-yard line. Garza, number 17, came up from the secondary and made the hit, causing the fumble. And then a disagreement broke out between two teams as the coaches ran on the field to separate the players. There are no markers down. I know what's going through Pat Dye's mind right now on the Auburn sideline. Here you see his offense has a great drive. Here's the give to Joe Frazier. Moves up the field just put the helmet by Willie Mac Garza on the football caused the fumble Texas trying to pick it up good recovery by Bo Robinson but what's going through Pat Dye's mind right now is the fact that we're having all the success offensively we're not getting the ball in the end zone we're missing opportunities we're on the road we cannot afford to keep doing this so, so let's take a break 922 left in the third period Auburn still by a touchdown 14 to 7. The player who was shaken up was Tim Tillman. You could see number 73 going after the football. And when his head came down on the football, it's like it came at an angle, so it lifted up his face mask, and he was hit from behind at the same time. So to blow to the face. And Adrian Karsten with an update for us. Adrian. Oh, Ron, you hear about having a nose for the football. It's exactly what happened. The injury happened about five feet in front of me here. Came through, literally the ball hit him in the hole in the face mask and took a shot right between the bridge of the nose and his left eye. Really created quite a laceration. Well, we're going to try to get a further update on him, but he went off the field on his own, which was good to see. Adrian Walker hit at the line of scrimmage and defensively Richard Shea with the play. Tim Brando, what do you have for us? LSU, this is their home opener and only about 65,000 are there. That's not what they like at Tiger Stadium. But they do like this. Jeff Brothers of Bandy picked off by Ricardo Washington, a converted tight end. Tigers lead it 10-7 with the help of their defense. Interesting. So the defense has to come up with a touchdown since the Tiger offense could not put it in the end zone yet. Saxton caught from behind, and it's the third Auburn sack of Texas quarterbacks tonight. This time it's Reggie Barlow, the senior from Albany, Georgia. Texas has got away from the option a little bit. They haven't run an option in the second half yet. And that's what they do best. That's what Jimmy Saxon does best. You got a good look at Stan White, who was getting a chance to relax in the sidelines for a couple of moments. His ball club leading by a touchdown. About to hit eight minutes remaining in this third quarter. Walker breaks off one tackle, but Cunningham, Carrick and Cunningham, a junior from Peach Street City, Georgia, there to make the stop. And Mike, I'm with you. In fact, the crowd, it's a very smart football crowd in this part of the world. It's like basketball in the Midwest and the They know their football in a, a few scattered booths. Well, I, I think, think they was, recognize what you were talking about. I think about. that was a good call. You have third and long. There's no sense trying to throw it up for a turnover. Let your defense play. Kick has gotten away. Auburn was offside. It's good heaven. This one may go out of Travis County. All the way down to the 21-yard line. I think they turned this penalty down. You're not going to get a better kick than that, I don't believe. <laughs> it was Fred Smith who got a head start. <laughs> you say he got a running head start. Fred was five yards across the line of scrimmage. That's what Pat's saying. Pat's saying, what happened? Go, baby. Go, baby. Here you see Fred Smith. He's going to block <laughs> it one way or another. <laughs> And 
they did turn the penalty down. And and when you get a 56-yard punt, yeah, you turn them down. Take it. And well, Fred now says, I don't want to stand next to Coach here right now. Yeah, but he grabbed him. He said, you're not going anywhere, son. Stay right here. I want to tell you a little bit more about that mistake you just made. Pat talked to us yesterday afternoon as his team was going through their walkthrough. But when it came to special teams, he left us to make sure he had a hands-on situation. Joe Frazier to the 25. Anthony Curl. And Shane Dronette is the man who actually tripped him up. Curl was there to finish him off. I wonder if they've given him a nickname yet, Joe Frazier. I, I assume everybody calls him Smokey, wouldn't you think? Uh, nobody believes that, though. That's you know. what, I didn't want to throw it out there. <laughs> Tommy Bowden, when we talked with him earlier this week, we asked him where his offense came from. He said 60 to 70 percent of it came from his dad. And the other part from Homer Smith and Steve Sloan, who had been he had been influenced by. White going to go long. He's got Frazier there, just a little bit long. So now third down for Auburn, and the line to make is the 32. I, I thought the other thing that was that was interesting about what he said. I said, you know, if, if your name is Bob, do you have any trick plays in your repertoire? <laughs> he said. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And he said, you know, Dad and I don't we don't hunt and fish. All the brothers are coaches. He said, we don't hunt, we don't fish. Football is our life, so we talk football constantly. Christmas dinners is when those plays are drawn up. With a, a turkey drumstick. Incomplete. Reed McMillan had it go through his fingertips, and in fact, on a tip ball like that, very dangerous situation. Longhorns are going to get the ball back. Pine uses the intercepted. I, I, let's look now and see if Texas goes back to the option on this, this possession. I think Texas will go after this kick. This looks to me like they have set up to go after a block kick a couple times earlier. George gets the boot away. Good coverage kick, very high. Garza with the fair catch, and he'll make it at the 40-yard line. So let's take a break. Six and a half minutes left in the third period. Auburn still leads. Texas campus. You can see the Texas Tower in the background. This has been a great night temperature-wise. The fans have had fun. It's, it's finally cooled off in Texas. Temperature in the mid-60s. Bill Brown in the ball game, and the running back from Commerce gets knocked out of bounds very hard. And Tim Brando, another update for us. Guys, here's an interesting one for you. Eric Zyre's got the dogs of Georgia moving in against Alabama. But he's hit and he fumbles the football. Now, in the old days, you couldn't advance this. Now you can. Antonio London comes up with it. Problem was, back there at the pile, they had blown the whistle. Play dead. Key, key whistle there. <laughs> Our situation, second down to 12. 6.25 left in the third quarter. Auburn 14 to 7. Saxon puts it on the money, and it is dropped by Mike Davis. And the tight end was real close to Davis. Either somebody got shoved out of their route or I got a little confused there. Bad route. Bad route. Curtis Drift, Dave number 84, is in the same area as Mike Davis, number two. Remember what they talked about in the Mississippi State game that the receivers ran so many bad routes that hurt the quarterback, Peter Cardier. Patrick Wilson and Adrian Walker come back in at running back. And for the Longhorns, a third down and 12. Blitz from the outside. Cunningham will grab Saxton and knock him down the fourth sacking of Texas quarterbacks. And there you see Carrick and Cunningham. Also credit John Wilson with a part of that sack. I said it earlier, you can't get in third and long in this offense because you're not just not throwing the ball and feel as well as you want. Just look at the surge by the Auburn defense. Jimmy Saxton almost made a bad decision to try to throw that late. It was the best move he could do, just bring it in and take the sack. goodness Bailey made a big error when he lost it had to run away from it and if you look at Pat Nye on the far side of the field he is waiting for his return man oh my well the AL East pennant chase continues on Sunday night the 
leading Toronto Blue Jays led by MVP candidate Joe Carter take on the three time American League champion Oakland Athletics led by Jose Canseco that's tomorrow night eight o'clock Eastern time and here are the standings New York belted by Boston 12 to 1 Oakland 4 to nothing in the final one half game one half game separating those two that's incredible. Joe Frazier almost breaks it out. Mike, he's done that a couple of times tonight. One tackle from breaking it big. And that's, that's what they have to establish is the ground game. As you see Pat Sullivan send the play in. Watch number 52, Michael Padgett, just waits on Joe Frazier. Just makes the flat tackle. Again, 4-3 defense. Hard to block the linebackers. Your tackles have to do the good job, though, to keep the, the interior lineman off those linebackers. They've got to absorb the block of two. pass well overthrown and it's because of Higgins number 31 was in there putting on the pressure Higgins is a real good friend of Alex Van Pelt at Pittsburgh they went to school together down in San Antonio Jeff Higgins played this one well uh, for a while it looked like the receiver was open here you see Stan White on the fake bring the tight end number 85 Fred Baxter out now you bring the other tight end across Victor Hall just poorly thrown ball he was open it reminds me of first game distractions, which we'll talk about when you have an away game. 10 of 21, 99 yards and a touchdown for Stan White. Third down. They need the 23. White, and I'll tell you, the pressure is bothering him. Again, it was Higgins who did an outstanding job and listened to this ovation for the Texas defense. He stayed at home, Ron, and that's what you have to do with a quarterback like Stan White, who's always on the move. Well, coming up at the end of the ballgame, Mike and I will be picking the Visa players of the game, one from each club. We'll be coming up late in the fourth quarter. Up the middle, almost blocked by Bubba Jacks. Takes a Texas bounce and all the way back, I don't believe it, back to the 31 yard line. They almost blocked that kick. They've been close all night and some of the things they're doing defensively on the kick. 14 yards on the punt. A falter by the special teams of Auburn. Let's go away for a moment. Seven, our score, 437 left in the third quarter. One more look. Watch Smith of Texas. Watch the reverse English on this ball. Whoa, let's get out of the way. Look at this thing back up, Mike. The punt only 14 yards as a result. Looked like a pool shot. Just came back to him. It looked like that nine iron shot that you wish you had ever hit. At least special teams. Six punts, two block field goals, one fumble, one offensive touchdown. Last 14, I mean the last punt, only 14 yards. Bill Brown cuts it up into the middle. He's going to have four, maybe five. That's Crawford. Darrell is right there to make the hit on him along with some of his friends. It's been a good hitting football game. I was talking about earlier the distractions. When you bring your team on the road for the first game, they're in a different bed. They're eating different food. They're all their family and friends who are at the ball game want to see them. So you just got to make sure they're on a business trip. And, and this is the first one for Auburn. And so, uh, you know, how they handle the distractions will be how they handle the football game. from that middle linebacking spot to make the tackle on Adrian Walker. Texas last two drives minus six and minus 11 yards. So right now they are confronted with a second and about six I believe it is so they have positive on this right. Third down and about six. The line to make is the 22. First 
Adrian Carson, let's get an update from you. Well, Ron, here's the situation. Now, at halftime, Butch had not, had not enough strength in that right ankle to come back and play. Now he says he's ready to go. Texas trainers say he's ready to go. But uh, being a coach's decision, when Adrian Walker has just as many yards in a shorter period of time, it's not a very difficult decision to make. Adrian's coaching, and now down there in the sideline. <laughs> Walker with the handoff. Fred Smith is right there to make the tackle, and Texas winds up with very little on that first down play. It's not so bad. You have a house full of people questioning your calls. Now the sideline reporters into it. 45 yards for Adrian tonight as you look at Lynn Amity, and of course Peter Gardere standing side by side with him. I like that. I like the fact that Peter Gardere is in this game trying to help Lynn Amity. He's a class young fellow. at the three-yard line. Alex Thomas. Jimmy Saxon on a rollout pass. Took a long time trying to set it up to throw to Curtis Drift. This ball was deflected. Intercepted by Alex Thomas. See the reaction of Jimmy Saxon. Oh, I'd like to have that one back. So Auburn from the three-yard line. Frazier, and he will not make it to the five. But the way they played offense tonight, and the way Tommy Bowden and Pat Sullivan have called plays, this may be a good time to challenge him with the pass from being backed up and throw the deep ball. Here's the handoff to Smoking Joe Frazier. Burnett on the tackle. Jumping that time, and here comes Frazier, and he breaks it out across the 20 and the 25, and that's just what I was talking about a moment ago. He had come within a step about four or five times in the ball game. You're right, Ron. I mean, he was close, and he broke the tackle here. Watch the hole on the left side. Here's the give. Good block by the tight end, a nice block by the fullback when Anthony Curl almost breaks close free. And number nine, Mark Berry, makes the stop. Good search because now you get out of the hole and you do some more things offensively and get back to your formations. 14 carries for 49 yards now for Frazier. And Auburn gets out of harm's way as far as close to their own end zone. Otis Mound spun down, and it's Tommy Jeter, the senior from Deer Park, Texas. Part of the front four, and you can see how fiery they are, something that we talked about off the top of the telecast. There's Tommy. Tommy Jeter's played well all night. A member of the front four. This is an excellent front four football team. 6'5", 283 pounds. I don't senior. think it's 183, no. <laughs> not the way he's playing. I, it's not that warm tonight. No, that whole front four has just played so well tonight against the Auburn big offensive line. Second down. White, great protection, incomplete. Dale Overton is the guy he wanted, and now another important third down situation. I haven't seen many screens tonight in this ball game, and there's been a pretty good pass rush. Texas may go to may, may go to try to slow that rush down a little bit. There's Leon Fuller. Making that defensive call. A lot of pressure on the coaches. And making every call. You want to be right. You want to put your players in the best possible defense, best possible offensive play. Stan White has missed his last five passes. Oh, my goodness. Incomplete. What a hit over the middle. That was Pageant who came up and put a headgear down on Otis Mounds. Michael Padgett 
He was waiting for Otis Mounds watching. He sees the little underneath route. He's coming up and wham, he's going to make that tackle. Cause that incompletion. Both teams are really responding defensively. Somebody needs to get a break to turn this one around. George gets the kick away. Boy, he has really endured some pressure. And again, the ball backs up. Takes a Texas bounce and will be touched down at the 42-yard line. Only a 17-yard kick that time. They may not be blocking these kicks, but they're putting enough pressure on him to make sure he gets them off that. We'll catch all the NFL action Sundays on ESPN. Join Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Joe Theismann for the most comprehensive preview show on television. It's NFL game day at noon tomorrow. And then see the best recap on television on NFL primetime at 7 p.m. only on ESPN. For speed wide receivers in, Ron. They're going to try to go downtown. 37 seconds left in this third quarter. Saxon gets it away. Going for McLemore just off his fingertips. Well, you've been talking about that one all night, and Saxton, whoa, did he take a shot. That was Richard Shea who hit him. And Tim Brando, back to you. Ron, I know all of our friends at Auburn want to know what's going on with Alabama. Well, Saran Stacy took over on a drive at Tuscaloosa against Georgia, and Bama has a 7-0 lead with 101 remaining in the third. Yeah, Tim, you're right. It, there was a, a strange reaction at halftime when they announced nothing, nothing score here. There were no cheers, but there were no boos. By the Auburn fans, of course, I mean. Adrian Walker will take it inside the, the 40 to the 39. Having moved to Mobile, Alabama, I can tell you one thing. I've lived in Ohio. I've lived in many states. I've coached and uh, moved around. But I have never seen a state that's so enthralled with football and people so interested as the state of Alabama. Now, you live in Texas, so I'm sure you're going to tell me the same thing here. Oh, but I... I have witnessed what you're talking about in Alabama. I mean, that is, that's serious stuff. That goes beyond just, just football. And that is the end of the third quarter. Auburn 14, Texas 7. We should have a good final 15 coming our way. We'll be right back. Austin, Texas, 14 to 7, our score. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten. Texas trailing by seven, and they're driving. They're at the Auburn 39. Saxton drills the pass. It is caught at the 29-yard line by a Derek Duke. Ron, he's their leading receiver. He's the person that they, in the first game that they went to and he's the one in the key third down situation that, that they were going to get the ball to. McDonald is out at center 77 Chad McMillan a senior from Katy Texas has come in replacing McDonald. Walker could do nothing but go on the ground to make the recovery. The pressure from Reggie Barlow and Saxton really didn't have much opportunity to, to lead with the ball. He did everything he could just to get it away. First option that they run to the wide side of the field. Reggie Barlow came down hard and got to Jimmy Saxton too quick. Saxton was not prepared to pitch the ball. That's awfully big. Now with a second down and Texas needing the 21 yard line and they're scrimmaging from almost the 39. Wilson couldn't hang on. I'm not so sure it would have gone very far anyway because there were white jerseys, particularly Anthony Judge, a senior out of Fort Lauderdale, number 59. Barlow and Wilson, of course, you allowed the, the defensive front to come through, but they were hot on the trail of Jimmy Saxon, and now it is third down. Auburn's done such a great job on defense tonight is substituting. They brought a lot of players in. They're fresh here in the fourth quarter. Childers had come in the ball game now at running back. He joins Adrian Walker, as you saw Peter Gardier signaling in the signals from the bench. Saxon intercepted. Alex Thomas again, his second in this second hand. Yeah, you don't want to be in 
third and 18 uh, any coach in the country will tell you it's a it's, it's tough and the percentages are against you here he throws into coverage there's a curl route Alex Thomas standing right in front of the throw so the second interception thrown by Saxton tonight it's four Texas turnovers three interceptions one thrown by Gardere that one the touchdown by the Auburn Tigers back in the first half by Corey Barlow. White for McMillan can't hold on. Adrian Karsten what have you got for us. Well, I'll tell you what Ron. Last week against Mississippi State in 12 offensive drives, the Longhorns only came up with two field goals. Tonight in 12 drives, came close but couldn't quite uh, ready to get it done again. They've only got one touchdown. In 24 drives, 13 points. That's no way to win the Southwest Conference. No, that's an excellent point. What's going to have to happen is the defense is going to have to make a big play, an interception, and they've made some big plays tonight, or the kicking team, special team, to try to get a score. Chuck Johnson, number 79. Came back and, and has played on, on the last couple of series. Frazier, big opening, has five, counted off at close to 10 yards. Shane Dronette makes the tackle for Texas. I think we're going to hear a lot from number five before it's all said and done, before his career is over. He's out of Montgomery. You have to look at him, and every time he carries the ball, it's a new experience because he was on the other side of the line making a tackle. So he's had 16 rushes tonight, 57 yards. He can only get better with experience. He doesn't know what's happening to him. They just give him the ball, and he sees new things for the first time. It's like a little kid walking. He doesn't know enough to know pressure. That's no. what you're saying. Enough for the first down, 13-24. Remaining in the ballgame, Auburn 14-7. They run the reverse. Parker steps out of bounds just short of midfield at the 49. I tell you, the people are going to get a headache when they see this film are the teams that have to play Auburn on offense because you're always looking for tendencies and they do so many things well. Here they run the reverse and get a pretty good game. Boone Powell makes the tackle along with Todd Ringo. You know what they also did, what, just what you're talking about, it was an influence play with the guards coming the opposite way and then didn't hit the uh, reverse. down as Garza comes up to help out on the stop and now a flag downfield and that was after the play in the vicinity of where Anthony Redmond number 65 of Auburn was located Auburn's backing up so it must be on them Mike, I'm not so sure it didn't happen after the play, so I think the down will stand. Dead ball, personal foul, offense, second down. That makes it tougher. Only three penalties against Auburn, a total of 30 yards, but that one right there pushes the ball back way back to the 39-yard line. This game is like a game where there's just it's waiting for one more big play to set it off by some team one of these offensive or defensive units or a special team to just set it off and end it. White going to go long and he's got Cherry open and he couldn't hold on. Pedro Cherry. The junior from Windsor, North Carolina, went parallel to the ground, and the jar of the turf, he couldn't hold it. Pat wants instant replay right now. <laughs> Tulane coming back on Rice, 21 to 13 now. And you judge for yourself. No, 
that touch the point of the ball touch the uh, the ground. White dumps it off to McMillan, and there's Lance Young. Ronette came from the left side with pressure and his stand rolled the pocket dumped off the pass and McMillan had to pay the price. I'd keep trying to block the punt run. You got to have to help your offense some way. Maybe it's two special teams. Well his last two punts have been 14 and 17 and boy did he make up for it. This one is all the way back to the seven yard line by Garza. No place to go. Texas will have to scrimmage for their own 10. That is a 54 yard punt. Let's take a break. 50 left to play in this football game and Texas from their own 10 yard line. Childers and Brown the two running backs. Ricky Sutton will put the stop on Childers. Shane is a red shirt freshman out of Spring Texas played in Spring Klein. Chuck Johnson, number 79, he injured in the first half. Kind of surprised that we uh, have seen him again, but he's back in the lineup. Bill Brown, ball is loose at the 16-yard line. Always teach your defensive players to point toward the other way. You may get it. Well, they're not getting this one. Texas on the recovery. Big question you got to ask yourself if you're Texas. Can you go the length of the field and drive the ball against Auburn? You haven't been able to do it all night. You're going to need a big play. Here's the handoff. Just a wide handoff. Again, I go back to working the first team quarterback works with those backs. They can walk and just kind of pulled out loose from him and they dodged one there. Walter Tate, 76. The junior from Decatur is the one who knocked it loose. So now third down. Adrian Walker not going to have the first down. Daryl Crawford, boy, what a game he's had tonight. Number 56. Throw out, throw out a thought uh, right now, uh, Ron, to you as to coaching again, thinking about coaching Lynn Amity on the sideline, David McQueen. Do you think about bringing Peter Gardier back in? Now, the reason I say that before you, we know how poorly everybody thinks he's played and so forth and so on, but it takes 11 guys. But he brought him back in seven of eight games last year. Do you consider him on the sideline? I think you do. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Six punts for 44 yard average tonight for McClanahan, his longest 59. Bailey from the 39. Look out. Finally stopped at the 34 yard line. That is one part of the Auburn special teams that have been outstanding tonight. 44 yards in the punt, 27 on the return. This is Milan Henelichka, goaltender for the Czechoslovakian Olympic hockey team. He's taken hundreds of stitches, suffered eight fractures, and has even been knocked unconscious. Yet he once went 11 consecutive periods without being scored on. But if you think it's tough to get something by him, wait till you see the guys at the ticket window if you don't have your Visa card. Because once again, the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Watch fall premiere week on A and E. It'll be back. A and E, making TV special. In high school, Sharon Simpson used to call me Pinhead. 
So at the tenure class reunion, I drive up in my new Eagle Talon TSI all-wheel drive. And what did she say? Nice car, pinhead. My big brother says his Eagle Talon has 195 horses under the hood. Oh, so you're looking for the horses. No, I'm checking out the intercooled turbocharger. One of the nation's top young quarterbacks, Tommy Maddox, leads UCLA against high-powered San Diego State Thursday night, live on ESPN. Well, there you see the score. Interesting number. Stan White in the second half, 3 of 11 for 13 yards after going 8 of 16 for 86 and a touchdown in the first half. Frazier again. Gets by one tackler, and that is Padgett, who will knock him down along with Gunn. This Texas defense has played well. I think Texas offense in areas have played well. They just haven't come up with a big play. Lynn Amity tonight has tried to call the game to keep his team in the game and try to milk enough yardage to get in there. They missed a couple opportunities with some interceptions. Leon Fuller now has to turn it up a notch because he has to try to turn back this Auburn team from any kind of score. Leon's side of the ball, the defense has only given up a touchdown. McMillan, big opening. First is way down in the vicinity of the 26, Lance Gunn. There to make the stop. David McWilliams, head coach here, former player. In fact, David was an academic All-American at Texas. He was a math major. And his son, Dennis, who plays on the team, number 50, is in aerospace engineering. And if it's next son, Corby, who's just come out of high school, scored a perfect score in the math section of the SAT. I, I think the McWilliams family and Matt get along well together. Keep him out of coaching. <laughs> Frazier, big opening in the middle. He'll have the first down, plus about 10. And Joe Frazier has just been a killer for Texas in the second half. You Eddie Blake with the good block. You mentioned earlier the offensive line play of Auburn. They've, they've now started to, to get this drive, which is a big drive for them, but they've played well all night. LSU still leading Vanderbilt. Under nine minutes to play. Smith finally stopped inside the 15. Then a highly recruited player out of Mobile, Electron Williams, who has not seen action tonight at the tailback position for Auburn. But if Joe Frazier really just gets better. Alex Smith, first time we've seen him carry the ball tonight. And Auburn just very pleased to just Continue to run the clock, keep it on the ground. <laughs> Boone Powell from his linebacking spot was number 56, and look at the, the hit that Stan White takes on this incompleted pass. Under pressure, they brought the outside backer. That way they were going to try to throw the play-action pass. Had him open, just didn't have time to get it off. needs the six-yard line. Yeah, yeah. Incomplete. Credit Willie Mack Garza with the hit. Boy, did he come up and belt the running back, Joe Frazier. Willie Mack guards a number 17 breaks on the ball here you see Stan White rolling to the right to get him away from pressure watch the break of the ball the receiver open there's Willie Mack Garza to knock it away now we have another field goal situation Garza caused that fumble on a deep drive in this half earlier Von Weil with an attempt of 31 yards I make one thing sure I block change in that here Ron Weil, who normally, from 
that distance is just automatic. And maybe the rush up the middle made him rush a little bit. So let's take a break. Auburn 14, Texas 7, eight minutes left in the ballgame. Team two interceptions, 85 yards. Which had not is back in the ballgame for Texas. Pass is thrown complete at the 31-yard line. And Tim Brando, what do you have for us? Hon, here is a play that can cost a team potentially a national championship. Nebraska punting, leading 14 to 9. Why does Bino Bryant even field this inside the 10? It's recovered by Mike Anderson. Then Derek Brown would take it in from two yards out. Nebraska up 21 to 9. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is uh, Lee Corso in the studio, Tim? I think I heard a tiptoe toward the door. Not over yet. Not over yet. Saxon back over the middle. Burleson is tight in. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what a great, great pass. Burleson with a good reception. And so many missed opportunities tonight when we were talking about Auburn is a good route. Jimmy Saxon is getting the job done. Here you see Jason Burleson. Running down the field, a little late, just underplayed a little bit by Fred Smith. It took so long to get there. The key of the play was Burleson's inside turn because he made it impossible for the defensive back to make the play. He probably learned that in basketball in high school. Adrian Walker in that tough run defense, Benny Pierce, will knock him out of bounds and they will lose a couple of yards. Bob Boyd, the tight end coach, standing next to Peter Gardere as they signal in the plays. Burleson, three catches, 83 yards. He's just had an outstanding game tonight. There's a football player right there, number 51. He gets my vote as a linebacker out there. He is a good run support guy, and he's also doing well in pass coverage. Auburn linebackers all playing well. When you look at, at Willis, at Crawford, and at Pierce, all three of them have played extremely well. Texas got used to coming back in 1990. Pass is complete to Kenny Neal at the 26. They'd like to come back, as the graphic said, seven out of eight times last year. Ron James Saxon gets the opportunity to do it tonight. <laughs> Got six minutes and 40 seconds to do it. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten in Austin, Texas. And hope you're enjoying this one. Auburn on top, 14 to 7. Six and a half minutes to play. Walter Tate's going to make the tackle. And that had to have been a blown assignment because Saxon went out to make a handoff, and Walker had already gone. It's going to be interesting. I think the tight end moved, which would nullify that play from the start, which should make it first and 15 unless they didn't get it before the snap. Saxton is injured. And the only thing that would tell me that the angster the uh, anger of the youngster throwing his headgear down is that he knows he is hurt and maybe hurt to the point where he can't go. Now he looks like he has to come out. So that means a field goal attempt from the 30 yard line. Lucas will hold Ziegler 0 for 2 tonight. Kick is long enough, and he's good. Saxton is down on the bench, and Adrian Karsten is standing there in the area trying to get a report on exactly what is wrong with, uh, with Jimmy. We'll go to him momentarily when he finds it out. Jason Ziegler. Watch the play here. Number 11, Lucas, backup quarterback, took the snap, bad snap. He was able to get it down, Ron, for the good field goal. Oh, 
This has been an interesting football game, to say the least. 14 to 10, our new count. And let's go down to Adrian Carson. Adrian, what do you have for us? As far as we can tell at this point, Ron, it, it appears that uh, he really got his bell rung. He put his head down. It was definitely a blown assignment. He went to roll out to the right and hand off to Adrian Walker. Walker was not there, and he took the full brunt of that offense, Auburn defensive line. Back shortly if I, when I've got more. See, that's Tate who hit him, and Tate weighs like, what, 320 pounds. It was the second hit, Ron. Alonzo Etheridge, number 91, was the one whose helmet hit Jimmy Saxton's helmet. You see him shaking his head. He's trying to get the cobwebs out. Jason Post to kick it off. Thomas Bailey. Tell you what, Bailey has been a thrill a minute every time he has had, had his hand on the ball. Well, ESPN continues its exclusive coverage of Thursday night college football this week from San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium as the UCLA Bruins travel south to take on the San Diego State Aztecs. Mike Patrick and Mike Gottfried will be there on Thursday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. To keep our eye on Jimmy Saxon to see if he's able to go back in the game. He just led him on a great drive. Joe Frazier tries the left side. He's going to have about four. Michael Pageant, the middle linebacker, senior out of Beaumont. Michael is the one who had that big interception two weeks ago in the opening game against Mississippi State and almost took it the distance for the touchdown. He's played well all night. Michael Pageant's made some big plays, big tackles, and been in on some key plays in this game for the Texas defense. He injured a knee against Oklahoma three years ago, was lost for an entire season, and just came back last year at full speed. That's McMillan breaking it up the middle gun has to make the tackle and that is a huge first down for Auburn at 503 left to play in the ball game. The reason that play is so successful is they're usually given the deep handoff to the tailback. That play hits so quick with a fullback that the front four does not see the ball and he's on him so quick his stance he's up almost four yards or three and a half yards off the ball so he's on you really quick. came up to hit him. <laughs> he knocked him down hard. Tim Brando. Ron, an SEC matchup in Vanderbilt. Boy, they are the hard luck team this year. Jerry DiNardo's bunch moving in with 118 to play. Corey Ham Harris fumbles it. It's picked up by Wayne Williams. That would preserve an LSU victory. 16-14. That won't stop them from grumbling down there. They weren't happy with that kind of win. Good heavens. Boy, what a tough way to lose it. On your way in to score and win it. Good tough running by Alex Smith. And another Auburn first down. And now all of a sudden across the way, the bench of the Auburn Tigers beginning to smell victory with 3.52 left to play. They bring in Alex Smith and get good blocks on the defensive end. And then Alex Smith does a good job staying on his feet, picking up good yardage. But Pat Dye's turning this game over to his run offense and his offensive line. David McWilliams takes a quick peek up at the clock, and there's not much left there for his club. McMillan, there's that quick handoff. Dronette trying to take the football away from him. Couldn't get it done, and it's going to be a second down and short as McMillan, because of the high tackle, she kind of carried him along there to the 36-yard line. So quick on you, but what Auburn's done a good job on first down, picking up good yardage. 
McMillan, 10 carries, 56 yards. That's a career high for him. Now you can watch for Stan White to look up at that 25-second clock and let it go all the way down before he snaps it. Every precious second. Now Texas has to think about their three timeouts. White let it go all the way down to two seconds. And on the running play, McMillan is uprooted. They're going to have a third down. And about, what, about three and a half yards. The last third down situation, they had short yardage. They ran the ball with Joe Frazier. We'll see what they do now. Texas calls a timeout, so they stop the clock with 2.32. We'll be right back. We're back at Memorial Stadium in Austin. David McWilliams looking up at the clock as they talk strategy with 2.32 left to play in the game. It is third down, and Auburn needs the 33-yard line. Frazier, and they got it. Boy, Frazier has been some kind of tough tonight for that Auburn offense. And look at Pat Dye. Pat's going to call that guidance counselor from Montgomery on Monday and tell him, say, thank you again. Great blocking up front, the surge from Tillman, Meeks, and Eddie Blake making the difference on that play. 21 carries, 80 yards, now for Joe Frazier. He will be wrestled down at the 29 and now under two minutes left to play. <laughs> Texas calls a timeout. Tonight's Visa players of the game. First of all, for the Auburn Tigers, Alex Thomas. Two huge interceptions in the ballgame. One at the three-yard line would stop a certain field goal for Texas, if not a touchdown. And he also had a couple of tackles along the way. And for the University of Texas, it is Shane Dronette, the All-American defensive end. He has two blocked field goal attempts in this one tonight. And as a part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team and to each university on behalf of these athletes. Stan White. Looking on from the far side of the field, Texas players realizing that they got to create a miracle here if they're going to have an opportunity to win it. Millen goes straight up the middle. Michael Pageant down at the bottom of the stack along with Dronet. All you want to do now on offense is just hold on to the ball. They sp spent their last time out, Texas. So now all you have to do is, is try to get pick up at first down on third down. Pat Dye knows they're out of timeouts. So let's take a break. Texas takes their last timeout. We have 141 left to play. Yards and they take it up four minutes and 16 seconds on this drive. <laughs> Frazier and he's going to be stopped short at the 24 yard line. Anthony Curl is there to make the stop. Now it is fourth down for the Auburn Tigers. Hey, you got to think if you're Pat Dye, you kick a field goal, you at two blocked and you miss one. I think I'll run the clock down. Let it go all the way down, get the five-yard penalty, and then what do you do, Mike? I might not take the five-yard penalty. Take a timeout and then come on over and talk about it. Let it run down, get close to the 25 second, take the timeout, and then go over and talk about what your strategy wants. Do you want to try to kick the field goal, or do you want to just run one play? Now, Stan White had gone to the bench, and now he's coming back to the official. That's what they're going to do. They're going to do it. Called a timeout with one second on the, the play clock. So we'll hold it right here with 60 seconds left in the ballgame. Coming up 
next Saturday. A couple of interesting happenings. Mike and I will be in Knoxville, Tennessee. Auburn, number 13 ranked against number six ranked Tennessee. Some of those rankings could change after what has happened today. Number five, Florida fell. And then uh, immediately following our ball game, we head to the Pac-10. And uh, Mr. Fiziot and uh, Danielson will be out to handle this one. The Ducks against Southern California Trojans. Ron, I, th I think at this time I'd just run one play. I'd get the ball to Joe Frazier. I don't think I'd take a chance on kicking the field goal. I just think it's too many things is, have happened yeah. wrong with that kicking game tonight. Coming up immediately following our game, the CFA school board. If you pick up the first down, it's over. If you don't, and Texas gets the ball, you put your defense back on the field. They have no timeouts left they've had trouble moving it against you so I think that's the strategy that Pat Dye is going to go with fourth down They run the reverse pass is incomplete. It bounced off the turf. Now that stops the clock with 56 seconds left. Oh, is that a gutty call? I like the call. <laughs> I really did. I like the call. Peter Gardier comes back in the ball game. You can see Jimmy Saxton still sitting on the bench on the near sideline. No timeouts for the Texas Longhorns. Well, he brought him back seven out of eight times last year, so he gets a chance to do it again. He's up against it. Four of nine, one interception, 56 yards. That one interception was picked off for a touchdown. Let's see what the youngster can do. Those are complete, now incomplete as the ball comes loose. Anthony Judge making the play. Also, Darrell Crawford was there. I think what Pat Dye did on the, the, the fourth down play, I think, again, it was a good play. They didn't make it. If they ran the ball and didn't, they may have taken off a couple more seconds, but they still stopped the clock for Texas to have the football. He's got confidence in his defense, and he doesn't have any confidence in his field goal team right now. Gardier going to be sacked. That is the fifth sack by Auburn tonight. Reggie Barlow. Let's see. The ball is going to be placed down at the 24. I wonder why they stopped the clock. Was it an incomplete pass? Did they call that or, or what? He must have because you're exactly right. Incomplete pass. We've just been told by our official statistician here. Gardier zips the pass complete to Neal. That's enough for the first down, so the clock will stop for just a second as they move the chains. That's good for 14. Auburn playing very loose on defense. Pass incomplete. That'll stop it with 28 seconds. Back their linebackers up to a depth of 10 yards. The secondary is playing deep. I want to make sure we thank the, the two SIDs at this group, David Housel of Auburn University and also uh, Bill Little from the University of Texas. Both these gentlemen do an outstanding job, and we appreciate all their help. Bill Werndell, our expert spotter up here in the booth. And, of course, as always, the Big E, Elvin Lindblad, our official staff man. Great job, guys. Gonna go long for Neal, and the ball thrown out of bounds. Good luck, 23 seconds. They need to throw the ball down the field. They need somebody to make a catch, break a tackle. They need some type of big play. Auburn, the front four, is gonna get after Peter Gardier on this play. Mike Davis, who is... A uh, receiver with a lot of speed, junior from Kemper, Texas, number two, comes into the lineup. Barlow 
and Sutton with the pressure. Clock now with 16 seconds left. Texas will have a week off for Auburn. They head to Knoxville. And the Texas Longhorns are 16 seconds away from opening this 91 season 0 and 2. The one thing about their season, they still have the conference, and that's something that you still have to shoot for. If they lose this football game and they're 0 and 2, they still have that to play for. But they still have 16 seconds and a hope. That'll do it on fourth down. The pass thrown incomplete. And Auburn with eight ticks left on the clock. There's a frustrated young man. He's had a tough night. But as college football players, they practice and they practice and work so hard to get in this situation. And that's something you just have to handle when you win and handle when you lose. It was a happy Pat Dye. Now his thoughts will go right to the Tennessee Vols. Well, the man that he was hugging is Corey Barlow. And really, Barlow is the one who got the winner tonight with the interception for the touchdown of 29 yards. And there is the final play of the ball game. Stan White with the ball high over his head and a hug from his head coach. Once again, the final score, Auburn 14 and Texas 10. Stay tuned for the college football scoreboard next. From Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten, I'm Ron Franklin. Good night from Austin, Texas.